The Story of Caspar Hausa In the year 1828, amidst the turmoil of shifting geopolitical alliances and the rising tide of industrialization in Europe, a young boy known as Caspar Hausa stepped into the light of Nuremberg, Germany, and into the pages of history. Appearing seemingly out of nowhere, this teenage enigma instantly gripped the imagination of the world. But the story of Caspar Hausa only began with his appearance. With several chapters to be discovered, the mysterious and fascinating life that only seemingly began ended shortly after his arrival with an even more bizarre twist. Caspar Hauser, often described as a child of the dark, entered the bustling society of 19th century Nuremberg like a sudden, unexpected phantom. A human riddle wrapped in a mystery, his origins and identity triggered endless debates and discussions. Was he a feral child lost in the wilderness, a lost prince hidden away for political reasons, or simply an elaborate fraud? As we journey through the life of Hausa, we will attempt to untangle these threads of speculation and present to you a compelling narrative of one of history's most puzzling figures. With a puzzling note in his hand and the innocence of a child, Hausa was thrust into the glaring spotlight of public curiosity. His story would grow to become one of Germany's most enduring mysteries, and even today, it still captivates and perplexes historians and laymen alike. The Mysterious Appearance of Caspar Hauser As we delve into the first chapter of our captivating tale, the year is 1828, and we find ourselves in the heart of Nuremberg, a city known for its rich history and stunning architecture. But amidst the usual hustle and bustle of everyday life, a strange scene unfolds on the city's streets that would bewilder its residents for years to come. On May 26, a young boy, seemingly in his mid-teens, appears as if out of thin air. He can hardly walk, barely stand, and seems incapable of expressing himself beyond a handful of phrases. This boy is Casper Hausa, the mystery child of Europe. With a bizarre note addressed to a cavalry captain in his hand and dressed in peasant's clothing, the boy was taken in by the local authorities. His limited vocabulary and the peculiar circumstances of his appearance gave rise to a wave of rumors. Was he a lost prince, concealed due to a power struggle within the royal houses? Or was he a feral child, raised in isolation from society, now venturing into civilization for the first time? As the town tried to grapple with the identity of the mysterious newcomer, they realized that Hausa was not your ordinary teenage boy. His diet was unnervingly peculiar. He seemed to subsist solely on bread and water, reacting with disgust to any other kind of food. His eyes appeared painfully sensitive to sunlight, suggesting he had spent much of his life in dimly lit or entirely dark environments. But the most baffling fact was his apparent ignorance of almost every aspect of everyday life. From basic social customs to the most mundane of objects, everything seemed alien to him. The boy appeared to have minimal human contact before his appearance in Nuremberg, which sparked numerous theories about his past. Perhaps the most chilling was the suggestion that he was raised in total isolation, confined in a dark cell with limited human interaction. While this would explain some of Hauser's peculiarities, it posed a new set of questions. Who would imprison a child in such a manner, and why? As the town puzzled over these questions, Caspar Hauser became the focus of scientific and public interest alike. His curious condition provided a rare opportunity for scholars of the time to explore the concepts of nature versus nurture, and the effects of isolation on human development. But curiosity wasn't restricted to academia. Hausa's story began to spread far and wide, capturing the public's imagination across Europe and beyond. The mystery child of Nuremberg had become an international enigma. Life in Nuremberg, a boy out of nowhere. In the ensuing years, Hausa found himself under the care of different guardians, each hoping to uncover the mystery behind this enigmatic boy. The first among these was a schoolmaster, George Friedrich Daumer. Dalmer was intrigued by Hauser's story and hoped to further his education and social integration. Under Dalmer's guidance, Hauser began to make some remarkable progress. He started to learn the German language with a surprising speed and showed signs of integrating into society. But while his linguistic abilities improved, his other behaviors remained peculiar. 
He continued to display an extreme sensitivity to light and sound, often reacting dramatically to mundane stimuli. In addition, his obsession with spinning objects, his fascination with mirrors, and his tendency to go into trances gave his observers cause for concern. While living with Dalmer, Hausa also claimed to have sporadic flashbacks of his earlier life. He spoke of a small cell, a dark, confined space where he spent most of his time. His only human contact was a masked man who would feed and teach him a handful of phrases, but never revealed his face. While this corroborated the theory of Hausa being raised in isolation, the inability to verify his claims raised skepticism among some observers. A strange discovery, Casper's forehead wound. But just as the boy was starting to integrate into society, tragedy struck. In the early morning hours of October 17th, 1829, a discovery was made in the basement of the Dalmer residence. Casper Hausa, with fresh blood dripping from a cut on his forehead, claimed to have been assaulted. He described his attacker as a masked figure who, while he was in the privy, struck him and chillingly warned, Your death awaits before Nuremberg's walls are left behind. He professed to recognize the voice as the same man who had deposited him in Nuremberg. Hausa's trail of blood suggested he had initially sought refuge in his room on the upper floor, but for some reason, he had descended into the cellar via a trap door instead of seeking help. Local authorities, sensing danger, arranged for his immediate relocation under the supervision of city official Johann Biberbach. Skeptics viewed this episode with suspicion, suggesting Hauser's wound was self-inflicted. The theory posits that he used a razor to harm himself, first returning it to his room before venturing down to the cellar. Critics argue that this could have been an attempt to gain sympathy following a recent disagreement with Dalmer, who had begun to suspect House's propensity of lying, yet no one could tell for sure. The cycle of caretakers continued, with each one observing House's peculiar behavior, attempting to educate him, and trying to solve the riddle of his past. Theories abound. Some saw him as a grand imposter, manipulating the public's sympathy while others genuinely believed in his tortured past. Among all his guardians, though, one stood out. Lord Stanhope, a British nobleman. He took a keen interest in Howes's case, and even promised to take him to England. Stanhope invested significant time and resources in tracing Howes's past, but his efforts would later be proved fruitless. Specifically, he financed two trips to Hungary, intending to trigger the boy's recollection. Hausa exhibited hints of remembering Hungarian words and had previously claimed the Hungarian Countess Metheny as his mother. However, Hausa could not identify any structures or landmarks during his visits to Hungary. As a result, even he could not solve the riddle and later would pass on the care of Hausa to the care of a schoolmaster. The Mystery of Casper's Real Identity Hausa's tale captivating as it is, also brings to light the inherent nature of humans to seek and establish an identity. His very existence questioned the norms of society. An individual without a past, without a clear identity, and with peculiarities that made him an anomaly. His life provides a lens into how identity is formed and how it can be manipulated or perceived differently. It's not surprising that many theories arose around House's origins. Some posited that he was of royal descent, the rightful heir to the House of Baden, replaced in infancy due to political intrigue. This theory, appealing in its dramatic overtones, was popular among the masses, fueling further intrigue and interest in Howes' story. Others, however, had a more skeptical view. Some believed Howes was an accomplished fraudster, fabricating his past to gain sympathy and social status. The discrepancies in his accounts of his attacks, his sudden recollection of language and social norms, and his sometimes evasive behavior were seen as evidence of deceit. Then some argued that Hausa might have been a victim of severe abuse, leading to a dissociative state and memory loss. His peculiarities, they argued, were symptoms of extreme psychological trauma. This perspective added a tragic tone to his already enigmatic story. Regardless of the truth, Casper Hauser's story had taken on a life of its own, serving as a mirror for societal attitudes toward identity, acceptance, and the human psyche at the time. A Sudden Demise The Mystery of Casper's Final Moments As we delve further into Hauser's intriguing existence, it's impossible not to mention the mysterious circumstances of his death. 
It's almost as if the enigma that marked his life followed him to his grave, shrouding his end in the same perplexing mystery surrounding his origins. On December 14th, 1833, Hauser returned home with a deep gash in his left chest. In his narration, he was drawn into the on-spot court garden by a stranger, who stabbed him while handing him a bag. A search of the court garden by policeman Harring revealed a tiny violet purse inside a cryptic penciled note written in mirror script, supposedly from his attacker. The note spoke of a man from the Bavarian border who wanted to take Hausa to his birthplace. Yet the note's authenticity and its odd mirror writing only added more layers to the already tangled web of Hausa's story. It was filled with spelling and grammar mistakes characteristic of Hausa. In addition, Mrs. Mayer noted the note was folded in a distinct triangular manner, a style often adopted by Hausa in his letters which fueled speculation. However, a few days after the incident, he would succumb to the fatal injuries, taking with him answers that might have unraveled his story. His demise, much like his arrival, was fraught with suspicion. Was it an assassination, a self-inflicted wound, or the doing of a manipulative puppet master? Did he die in a desperate attempt to regain the sympathy and attention that was gradually fading away? Or was he silenced to preserve the secrecy of his true identity? Many authors have posited that Hauser, in a desperate attempt to reignite public curiosity and persuade Stan Hope to take him to England, might have accidentally harmed himself more severely than intended. Even the post-mortem examinations of his body led to conflicting reports. Some experts argued that the angle of the wound suggested it could be self-inflicted, while others refuted this claim. His death, like his life, was a puzzle that remained unsolved. Unraveling the Enigma of Kasper Hauser In the wake of his death, countless theories have been proposed about his identity. Some speculated he was the lost prince of Baden, switched at birth by conspirators who feared the political repercussions of the legitimate heir. Others claimed he was a pathological liar, a brilliant manipulator who crafted his own mythical identity. Still, others suggested that he was simply a lost boy, a victim of circumstance and that the world read too much into his ambiguous past. Yet, what's undeniable is that House's story has a timeless allure. The mystery of his origin, the tragic arc of his life, and the enigmatic nature of his death have inspired many. From books and plays to songs and films, Casper Hauser's tale continues to be revisited, retold, and reimagined. Scientists, historians, and amateur sleuths alike have all tried to piece together the puzzle of his life. In 1996, a DNA analysis was conducted on a blood-stained cloth believed to be Hauser's. The results were compared with the descendants of the House of Baden. Still, they proved inconclusive, leaving the question of his true identity unanswered. As we look back on House's life, we can't help but be drawn into the mystery of it all. We are intrigued by the unknown and captivated by the unanswered questions. We yearn for closure, for a clear narrative that makes sense. But perhaps it's the very lack of these answers that keeps the memory of Casper Hauser alive. Casper Hauser's Legacy And so, as we draw the curtain on the tale of Casper Hauser, we are left with a profound sense of wonder and introspection. While never fully resolved, the mystery of House's life remains a powerful testament to the enduring allure of the unknown, the resilience of the human spirit, and our collective quest for truth, understanding, and identity. It is a story that continues to captivate us, provoke thought and spark debate, reminding us that life, in all its complexity and ambiguity, is a mystery to be explored rather than a puzzle to be solved. As we leave his tale behind, we carry forward a narrative inspiring curiosity, courage, and growth. If you enjoyed the captivating story of Casper Hauser, remember to hit that like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. And for more intriguing stories, subscribe to our channel and join us in our next journey into the past.